Hi, Honors Biologist, Ms. Dreesen here. Today we are going to be learning about Learning Target 2, which is essentially about different types of cells. Your essential question for today is what different types of cells exist. And Learning Target 2 says you should be able to compare and contrast eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells in terms of their relative size, their complexity, and the structure, and recognize examples of them. So let's start with a brief overview of cell scale. Um, it can be really hard to grasp the notion of how just how cell, just how small individual cells can be. So I wanted to walk you through this brief little animation. I did link this into today's assignment in case you want to explore it a little bit more yourself. So if you can see here, this is representing if you were looking at a piece of paper and looking at the 12 point font size. And if we were to zoom in, you've got a coffee bean, you've got grain of rice. And let's zoom in a little bit. So even smaller than a grain of salt is one of the larger types of cells that's out there and that's called an amoeba. An amoeba is a type of cell that we will be learning about. It's a single celled living organism. Um, it is a protist and it essentially itself is one living cell. And it's a pretty big living cell in comparison to other types of cells we will look at. Slightly smaller than the amoeba is another type of unicellular life called paramecium. The largest human cell of the human body is actually the human egg cell. And smaller than that is the skin cell next. Um, and then smaller than that even is the sperm cell. So if you think about your skin, when you look at your hand, for example, just think about how immensely small that is and compare it to, for example, like that grain of rice that was up here, or sorry, grain of salt. So even smaller than a grain of salt are individual skin cells. And then you've got red blood cells, which are even smaller than that. Within cells, you find things like chromosomes, which are structures that contain your DNA. So you can see that a chromosome, um, which would be found here inside of a nucleus, is quite small as well. Smaller than even that is the mitochondria. Um, mitochondrion is singular. So if you remember learning about the mitochondria, when you learned about cells in middle school, that might sound familiar. But here's what I wanted to compare to. So here's one example of a bacterial cell. This is a representative of E. coli. And so just look at how small that E. coli bacterial cell is to, for example, your red blood cell. These bacterial cells are quite small. They're, they're very, very small. And even smaller than bacteria are viruses. Uh, viruses are considered in biology to not be living. They're not themselves alive, uh, but they do in, infect living cells, and so that's why they are part of this scale. So you can look at how small those viruses are in comparison to the cell that we looked at. And even smaller here, you can get all the way down to, if you wanted to, you can go all the way down to the carbon atom as a comparison. So this is kind of a fun activity if you want to look at, but just to get a relative scale of sizes, bacteria are significantly smaller than even the smallest of the human cells, which include red blood cells, skin cells, sperm and egg, and then the single-celled living organisms called amoebas and paramecium. All right, so going back to our notes. So there are two major types of cells that we will be learning about. The first we are going to learn about are prokaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells, those are the bacterial cells that we saw. These are the smallest types of cells. They have very simple structure. Um, they have very few organelles, and it's important to review the word organelle. Uh, organ means a structure inside that does a job, and L refers to tiny or small. So organelles are like the um, organs inside your body, but these are the organs inside of tiny, tiny cells. So they have very few organelles inside of their structure, and if you were to look at this bacterial cell here example, we've got the external cell wall. We have inside the cell wall is a membrane. And then sometimes bacterial cells will have a really thick outer layer called a capsule. Not all bacterial cells have that. You can see here an example of a flagellum. Um, flagella is plural, flagellum singular. This is a very long tail like appendage that we will be learning about soon. And you can see the interior of the cell is filled with the cytoplasm fluid. There are little dots called ribosomes that you will learn about later this week and then also floating around inside is the DNA. But once we get a glimpse into the other types of cells, you'll realize really how quite simple these bacterial cells are. And the, remember that prokaryotic means bacteria, so you might want to write that down in your notes. 
Prokaryotic cells are, like we mentioned, very, very small, for, uh, ranging from 1 to 10 micrometers. They were the first cells to evolve, so the first living things to evolve on our planet. They are single-celled living organisms, so one single bacterial cell is considered to be an organism. Here's some examples of diversity of different types of prokaryotes. So you can see that there are some circular types of bacterial cells. There are some that are rod-shaped. There are some that are curved rods, for example, spirilla. Um, and then you've also got, for example, the helical-shaped or the club-shaped types of bacteria. So let's take a look here at where they get their energy from. Uh, bacteria can get their energy from a wide range of different sources. For example, some bacteria are considered to be photosynthetic, meaning they contain pigments that capture sunlight and help them um, create energy for themselves. Some bacteria are chemoorganotrophs, which means that they can um, get energy from different chemicals in their environment, whether those are organic chemicals or inorganic chemicals. Some also um, are heterotrophs, meaning they feed on other organisms in order to get their energy. The second type of organism we will be learning about, or the second type of cell type, is called eukaryotic. Eukaryotic cells are more complex, meaning these cells contain far more structures inside of them in comparison to the bacterial cells we learned about, so they have lots of little organs that do different jobs. Eukaryotic cells are much larger than prokaryotes. They contain a nucleus which stores and protects their DNA. In fact, the nucleus is one of the defining characteristics of a eukaryotic cell. Organisms may be single-celled or multicellular, uh, meaning some, some of these types of cells, one cell is considered to be alive, whereas in animals like us, for example, we need multiple cells to build our body. And examples of eukaryotic cells include protists, fungi, plants, and animals. In this picture, you can see examples of some of the diversity of what we call protists. Protists are the unicellular or single-celled um, animals that are alive. So these have little organs that help them do their jobs. And I wanted to show you a little video that kind of briefly re uh, reviews. You, in the video you, you watched in cell type or cell theory, you saw, for example, Antony Lewin Hook looked in a, uh, a droplet of water at some of the unicellular life that he saw. And I wanted to show a video that kind of covered that a little bit more in terms of what you actually see in a microscope. So please watch. It's only a minute. So inside of this paramecium, you can see some of their organs doing different jobs.
All right, it's pretty amazing what we can see today with our technology with microscopes compared to what Antony von Leeuwenhoek would have seen back in the 1600s. Um, so again, those were all protists, which basically means that each of them was a unicellular living organism. Uh, but if we were to look at the structure a little bit more in depth, so here's an example of an animal cell, a general example, not every animal cell looks like this. But again, one of the defining characteristics of these eukaryotic cells is that they have the nucleus, which contains and stores and protects the DNA inside of it. Um, they also have organelles such as the Golgi apparatus, the endoplasmic reticulum, both smooth and rough. We've got mitochondria that do different jobs, um, and then we've got lysosomes, centrioles. We'll be learning more about these in a couple of days, so I'm not going to go over them too much, but just recognize the increased complexity in these eukaryotic cells in comparison to the prokaryotic bacterial cells that evolved first on our planet. Um, here are some more examples of animal cell diversity. Actually, I want you to ignore um, pollen grains, obviously, but here we see nerve cells, which is an example of a eukaryotic cell that you would find in your brain. Red blood cells, ignore bacteria, this is just a relative scale. Um, here you've got blood cells. There's, you have a lot of different types of blood cells, and each of them is a little bit different. You have surface skin cells, bone cells, muscle cells. I mean, all of them are highly diversified, and their function has changed as a result of evolutionary needs and each of them and now looks different too. So pretty cool to think about. I think there's over 200 different types of cells just within each of our bodies, which is I think absolutely amazing. So what do all cells have in common? What are the common requirements that a cell must have in order to be considered a cell? Well, first of all, they need to have an outer barrier. And oftentimes this outer barrier is the cell membrane. In some types of cells, they have an even stronger outer barrier that is the cell wall, but all of them at the very least have a cell membrane, whether that's the outermost layer or that cell membrane is sometimes within another protective layer that you'll learn about later. Um, all of them have a fluid-filled interior, which is the cytoplasm. This is a fluid in which all of the organelles float, and it's the site of chemical reactions that take place inside of a cell. All of the types of cells also have genetic information. Remember that genetic information, like your DNA, acts like a software code. It's a hidden language that essentially tells the cell how it's supposed to function and be the type of cell that it is. So that genetic information is passed on from cell to cell during the process of cell division. Um, and there were two types of nucleic acids that we learned about, DNA and RNA, which you will find in both types of cells. And last but not least, you will also find a protein factory called a ribosome. The ribosome builds the different types of proteins that does all of the work inside of the cell. So these are the four common requirements for all types of cells. You've got a cell membrane, cytoplasm, genetic material, DNA and RNA, and the ribosomes. Uh, please make sure you label these on the picture in your notes. All right, let's do a recap of what you've learned today. So I want you to do a, I, I don't like Venn diagrams because I don't like being cramped into the part in the middle. So I created a, a Venn table for you. So you have what is unique or um, special about prokaryotic cells and then eukaryotic cells. And then I want you to summarize what is both in the middle. So I want you to pause the video. Please do your best and fill this in to your best of your ability based on what you've learned. So pause the video now and fill it in. All right, let's compare our answers. So if we take a look at your answer key, so prokaryotic cells are simple, they are smaller, their DNA is floating in the cytoplasm, it is not protected in the nucleus. Prokaryotic cells were the first types of cells to evolve, and they are always unicellular. In comparison, eukaryotic cells are far more complex, they are larger in size, their DNA is found in the nucleus, they evolved from other types of cells. They can be unicellular, like the protists, or multicellular, like plants and animals. And they contain a nucleus to protect and store the DNA. Both types of cells contain ribosomes, contains both DNA and RNA, contains a cell membrane, and contains a cytoplasm. So hopefully this set of notes was helpful for you. If you have any questions, send me a message. 
Um, otherwise, make sure you practice what you've learned today using your Quizlet sets. Have a wonderful rest of your day.